Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the 1-5 practice problems video. This is the video where I go through and do all the practice problems so that you can see how they should have been done. Usually, sometimes I screw up, so you never know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, Liv earns $9.50 for every two bracelets she sells. The equation y equals 4.75x, where x represents the number of bracelets and y represents the total cost in dollars earned, represents this situation. What is the constant of proportionality? The constant of proportionality is the number in front of the x, is 4.75. And what does it represent in this context? Okay, now on the computer version, these are going to be drop-down boxes, but let's talk about what it represents. If she's selling two bracelets for $9.50, what is $4.75? She's making $4.75 for every one bracelet. Like I said, this will be some kind of drop down box thing. Uh, number two, John ran three miles in 25.5 minutes. The equation y equals 8.5x, where x represents the number of miles and y represents the time in minutes, represents the situation. What is the constant of proportionality? The number in front of the X right there, 8.5. And what does it represent? Well, if he can do three miles in 25 and a half minutes, and Y is the total time in minutes here, that means he's doing 8.5 uh, minutes per mile. All right. So you'll be doing 8.5 minutes per one mile. Oops, uh-oh, what did I do? Come back. <laughs> All righty, it's been a long day. Number three, Lincoln bought three bottles of an energy drink for $4.50. Write an equation relating the total cost to the number of drinks. Total cost over number of drinks. All right, well, if you divide top and bottom by three here, because we want a unit rate, we're going to get 150 for one bottle, all right? So the equation is going to be y equals 1.5 or 1.50x. If you want to leave the zero in or take it out, that's fine. And that is the equation for the proportion. Right? Number four, the total cost of renting a cotton candy machine for four hours is $72. What equation can be used to model the total cost over the hours. So the total cost is 72 over the hours, which is four. Okay. I think I know this one, but I'm going to double check it on the calculator just because it has been a long day. You would not believe. And actually, I think I'm probably supposed to be in a meeting right now and I'm not because I've got my door closed and I'm filming this video. I'm just going to pretend I didn't know I was supposed to be in the meeting. Yes, 72 divided by four is 18. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So the equation is y equals 18x, where it's $18 for one hour. Okay. Up next, ooh, now it's starting to get interesting. You know when they get more words, they get more interesting. Marley used seven cups of water to make four loaves of French bread. What equation can be used to model the total cups of water for making loaves of bread. So cups of water is seven and loaves of bread is four. Okay, so water over bread. Just as a reminder. So we're going to need to divide the top and bottom by four. All right. Well, four divided by four is one. Uh, seven divided by four, there's a couple of different ways you could write that. You could just write seven fourths. Um, some of you are true lovers of mixed numbers, which would be one and three fourths. Um, either one of those would work. All right. Um, so if we're going to write an equation, we would write y equals, and you could put seven fourths x, or you could put y equals one and three fourths x. Um, but then it asks, how many cups of water do you need for six loaves of French bread? All right. Well, bread is our y. So 
if we need to have six loaves of bread, how much water? Oh, hang on, somebody's at the door. Okay, we're good. It was just Miss Segrist. All right. So um, if we want to make six loaves of bread, though, this is how much water you need for one loaf of bread. All right, if we're going to get six, we're going to have to multiply this number by six. But you remember how many times have I told you that mixed numbers are about as useless as the G in lasagna? Right. If we're going to multiply one of these numbers by six, the one we want is seven-fourths. We're going to do seven-fourths times six. We're going to put a one under the six. We're going to multiply this out, be 42 over four. Well, I'm definitely these definitely both divide by two. We could reduce and see how this goes. We're going to have 21 over 2, which does not reduce. But you'll also remember that I said catering is about the only profession where mixed numbers are useful. <laughs> um, and this would, would seem to be a catering example. Are you going to measure out 21 half cups? Or are you maybe going to do 10 and 1 half cups of water? Either one of these answers would be counted right in reveal. All right, this is fully reduced. This is fully reduced. Now, if you were going to measure it out, this is probably easier. So that's what I meant by it's useful in catering. <laughs> Mrs. Henderson. Wow, Marley got in these problems and now Miss Henderson, what is she doing? She's making elf costumes? What the heck? I thought she was a gym teacher. Mrs. Henderson used six and three fourths yards of fabric to make three elf costumes. What equation can be used to model the total number of yards of fabric for number of costumes? All right. Well, if she used six and three fourths yards to make three costumes, all right, we divide top and bottom by three. On the bottom, we'll have a one, but we have six and three fourths divided by three. Let's change this to a, an improper fraction. Six times four is 24. 24 plus three is 27. So we're going to have 27 fourths divided by three. Put a one under it. Then we do keep, change, flip. And that will give us 27 over 12. Well, those both divide by three, divide top and bottom by three, we'll have nine fourths, okay? Um, so it's going to be one and three fourths, no, no, two and one fourth yards per costume, per one costume. But that's not what the problem asks. It wants to know how many yards of fabric do we need for seven costumes? Well, if we're going to find out, and this is how much it costs to make one costume, and we need seven, we need to multiply this number times seven. But if we're going to multiply a fraction times seven, we're going to go with the improper fraction. That's right, folks. Get rid of this. Okay, so we're going to go nine-fourths times seven. Stick a one under it. 9 times 7 is 63 over 4. This answer is completely acceptable, but if you go into Joann's and ask them for 63 fourths of some fabric, they're going to look at you like you have grown horns or something. We need to know how many fours are in 60. I'll just do it on the calculator. You don't want to watch me do that. 63 divided by 4 is 15 and 3 fourths. 15 and 3 fourths yards. Okay, so let's add sewing to the list of professions that use mixed numbers. Okay, sewing and catering. I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> it's going to take 15 and 3 fourths yards to make seven costumes. Next, multi-select. The table shows the cost of four movie tickets at two theaters. Select the statements that are true about the situation. Well, first of all, if this represents four tickets, how much is one ticket? Well, what's 30 divided by four? Let's make that simple. 30 divided by four. So one ticket at Movies Galore is $7.50. And 31 divided by four is $7.75. So Star Cinema charges $7.75 per ticket. 
So the equation y equals 775x models the cost for tickets at Star Cinema. Star Cinema? Yes. The equation y equals 30x models the cost for tickets at Movies Galore. No, this would be if they were charging $30 a ticket. They're not. They're charging $750 a ticket. Not that one. The total cost of nine tickets at Star Cinema would be $69.75. Well, Star Cinema, what we need to do then is multiply $7.75 times nine. Don't worry, I have the calculator. $7.75 times nine is $69.75. Check. That's right. And the total cost for one ticket at Movie Galore is $30. Nope, no way, not true. Next. Oh boy, these are those multi-step ones. Oh, 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 yes, this is gonna be fun times here. Oh boy, can she make it through without screwing these up totally? We'll see. Roman can type 30 pages in 60 minutes. So we're doing pages per minute. He can type 60 pages in, or three pages, see? What did I tell you? It's been a long day. Three pages in 60 minutes. So, and then we got to find out how many he can do in one, and then we got to compare 90 minutes to 60 minutes. We've been down this road before. Divide top and bottom by the bottom number. Okay, so this is going to give us a one here, but three divided by 60 is an icky decimal division problem that results in 0 0.05. So he can type 0 0.05 pages in one minute. That's pretty slow. Um, okay, so let's see. How many more pages can Roman type in 90 minutes? Well, we know he can do this much in one minute. So what would be 0 0.05 times 90 minutes? Let's go ahead and just put it into our equation here, all right? We had, this was our, our equation for our proportion, 05x. We put 90 in for x, okay? And now we're going to go 0 0.09, 0 0.05 times 90. All right, that is 4.5 pages in 90 minutes. And he was doing three pages in 60 minutes, and they want to know how much more is he doing in 90 minutes. So we just do the 4.5 minus the 3, and our answer is he is doing 1.5 more pages in 90 minutes, which seems about right. Now we have Asia. On average, Asia makes 14 out of 20 free throws. Assuming the relationship is proportional, how many more free throws is she likely to make if she shoots 150 free throws? So it's makes over attempts. Okay, she makes 14 out of 20. Divide top and bottom by the bottom number to get a unit rate. And 14 divided by 20 is 0.7. So she makes 0.7, she makes 0.7 free throws every one attempt. So that's, you know, about a 70% free throw shooting. That's pretty good. Um, how many more free throws is she likely to make if she shoots 150? Okay, well, she made 14 out of 20. Now we need to know how many will she make if she shoots 150? So basically we have our equation, y equals 0.7x, and now we're going to let x equal 150, 0.7 times 150, all right? And 0.7 times 150 is, give me a second, 105. But it doesn't want to know how many she'd make. It wants to know how many more free throws is she likely to make. Now we just have that more in there. So 105 is if she um, shoots 153 th free throws. And she would have made 14 if she only shot 20. So we want to know how many more is 105 
from 14. So that's a subtraction problem, and we get 91. 91 more free throws. She will make 91 more free throws. She'll actually make them. Okay, Evan earned $26 for four hours of babysitting. What equation can be used to model his total earnings Y for babysitting hours X? So we have earnings over hours, or money per hour. He's getting $26 for four hours. If we divide top and bottom by four, 26 does not divide evenly by four. Gives us six and a half. So he's charging $6.50 maybe per hour. We could write it that way. Money is usually in decimal form. So our equation is going to be y equals 650x. You can leave the zero in because it looks like money, or you can take it out. It doesn't matter. But that's the equation that represents his babysitting. Now, we need to graph this on the graph. Okay, so if Evan babysat zero hours, he would have zero money. So it is a proportion and it passes through the origin. If he babysits four hours, he gets $26, which is right here. Now, would there be any other points in between here? All right, well, let's think about this. If he babysat two hours, if X was two, 16 or 650, not 16, 650 times two, he'd probably rather get 16. 650 times two is 13. That's another point we can graph. At two hours, he would make 13. So this would be 12, 14, no, uh, 12. So this has got to be a spread of three. So this has got to be 15 here, okay? So then 13, after two hours, 13 would be just a smidge above 12, maybe like right about there. All right, well, now I'm going to try and draw a straight line, which I'm sure is going to be a total failure. Oh, yeah, I got a little jiggy there. But this would be a graph of Evan's earnings. To be safe, you could graph the 00, zero and graph that 426 one. Those are easy ones to, to nail, and the computer should be able to draw that line for you. Any two points. Okay, persevere with problems. The Diaz family spent 38.25 on three large pizzas. What's the cost of one pizza? All right, so we're going to do cost over the number of pizzas, cost per pizza. We know they spent $38.25 on three pizzas. To find out how much they spent on one pizza, we will divide top and bottom by three. $38.25 divided by three is $12.75. So they're spending $12.75 for one pizza. All right, what is the cost of one pizza? $12.75. Assume the situation is proportional and explain how you solved it. Well, I put the cost over the pizza and I divided them both by three. That's how I did it. Um, this is an interesting question. This is one we're going to discuss in class. I can tell you that the constant of proportionality can never be zero. I have yet to work out exactly. The thing is, is that if you had a proportion where K was zero, all right, Y is always going to be zero. If Y is always zero, then we are dealing with a horizontal line. Okay, because that's where y is always zero. And in fact, it's got to be a particular horizontal line. It's got to be the x-axis. Now, it means it makes logical sense that this can't be a proportion because it's not changing at a constant rate. It's not changing at all. And I'm fairly certain that that's what we're going to arrive at. But I'm looking forward to hearing the arguments um, from you all about why the constant of proportionality can never be zero. And so that's where we're going to leave off with these problems today. Um, we're not going to look at number 13. I'm not a particular fan of it. I want to leave off with the thought, can you have a proportion where the constant of proportionality is zero? Think about that and be prepared to argue your case. See you in the next video.